Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is Sayer G, founder of GreenMedInfo.com and today we'll be talking about turmeric and one of its primary constituents, curcumin, um, because it is the most heavily researched substance on our database. Um, just to get you a sense for how much research does exist, we're going to jump over here to PubMed.gov, which I encourage you all to search out and to use because it is the source for all of the data on our database. Um, this is a public domain uh, bibliographic uh, reference source where you can look up uh, up to 20 million different citations uh, using keywords very much like Google. So it's sort of like the Google of medicine and uh, life science related information. So let's type in turmeric and see how many results we get. Okay, as you can see, there's 1,800 peer reviewed published studies on turmeric in the literature. You can click and get the free abstracts and oftentimes there's a link to the full abstract which can cost uh, money to, to purchase. Um, but thankfully these scientists do a pretty good job of submitting a summary that will include information that gets to the heart of the matter. Um, this particular study actually look here in conclusion our results suggest that turmeric extract can provide protection against the negative effects of aflatoxin on the performance of broiler chickens okay let's go back now turmeric is the whole plant and oftentimes in the uh, medical field they're looking for magic bullet constituents so curcumin has become sort of the favored constituent in this this complex plant which includes over a thousand uh, naturally occurring phytocompounds. So curcumin is the primary polyphenol antioxidant in turmeric and if we type in curcumin and we search we find 3934 studies. Now what we've done over the course of a month is we've looked at every single one of these studies and we have Index the ones that were compelling that showed that turmeric had some medicinal value, if not uh, proven, then potential medicinal value for disease. And this is the page, turmeric. Um, we're going to show you how to navigate here first. So on the front page, you want to go to the substance index. You click that. It's an A to Z index. You go to T for turmeric. And you scroll down to you, and there it is. It's one of uh, 1,300 substances we've indexed. And as you can see, it's been shared 1,991 times. So other people apparently find this compelling. Now we have also uh, enabled this page to be viewed without membership, uh, which is a feature we are trying to promote because the resource as it exists today costs us $345 a month to uh, just pay basic operating uh, costs. So if you are interested in a membership, feel free. You can click on the left, become a member. Uh, it's only $2.95 a month. Um, so we're hoping this will be a real grassroots um, movement where people can participate for a nominal fee and help make this free re resource possible. Uh, but what we have done is pages that we feel are most important to get out to the public uh, we've enabled it uh, so that you have all the features a full member would have. <clears throat> now as you can see on top it gives you the article count you have diseases count so 569 different ailments are indexed across these 1500 studies and below you'll see them in a, in a moment. Now before we go there I want you to see this one feature which is limit articles by following study types. So let's say if you're only interested in the human studies you can click this and you'll find uh, just over 60 of the studies on the database are on um, human human subjects. And we've talked in the past about why this is and it's primarily because in order to find the capitalization required to embark on human clinical trials, um, it really requires an investor who is looking to get a return on his or her investment or if it's a corporation on the corporation's investment and that that is a fatal flaw uh, when it comes to um, FDA drug approval because patents are not available for natural things that you can grow in your backyard for free as we all know um, nor uh, do natural things uh, provide market exclusivity uh, so what that does is it's sort of like a kiss of death. In order to attain FDA approval as a drug, which is required for something to be used as a medicine within the uh, established medical system, 
it has to be proprietary and because nature does have her own proprietary formulas but doesn't grant patents uh, we are, are in a very difficult situation because although if you look at any number of the studies on this page and you'll see research indicating turmeric for example 169 studies showing it has antioxidant activity and interestingly enough in the context of a cancer model you'll find that it actually has a prooxidant effect so there's a certain selective cytotoxicity they call it um, with the herb being able to target tissue that for instance is not uh, participating in a healthy w way with the whole and uh, leave intact and protect tissue that is maybe undergoing oxidative damage which could eventually lead to uh, genetic changes associated with a cancerous phenotype so the point is is that um, there is a certain intelligence and uh, if you'd like ad adaptogenic quality to this plant um, we'll get a little bit into that in a second when we go through the pharmacological actions index so on the right here you see this column article count 169 on oxidative stress 51 on inflammation 38 on uh, lipid peroxidation 52 on DNA damage 61 on breast cancer and what you can do is you can select just those articles that you're interested in seeing so for example let's take the 24 in colorectal cancer you select those it's gonna focus these articles and it will take a few moments because the system is designed to cache out um, or store in a static form the information whenever we make these selections so uh, it looks like I'm the first one to select just these 24 for focusing so what that means is it's going to take us a little time but the next person who uh, does this it should be r rather rapid All right, as we're waiting a moment here I'd like for you to see that we're dealing with all types of cancers that seem to succumb to turmeric uh, 42 on prostate cancer um, let's see 24 on liver cancer um, let's see 16 on skin cancer and all this information um, is designed to make a certain argument what I mean by that is that you know we can't practice medicine because legally only a doctor can do so and okay now we have seen the filtering let me go back here so you can see as we get down to the end of this list of over 500 diseases okay we filtered to the top just the 24 studies on colorectal cancer okay so this is what makes the website um, unique uh, when you're using the fully enhanced membership view is that you're able to focus out parts of these 1400 I'm sorry 1500 studies that you find most um, interesting okay so we'll go back to the top and so this is the real key to our database is that you know we aren't medical doctors we don't have degrees in medicine uh, we're users we are trying to access as we, sh we showed you the peer-reviewed medical literature right off Medline um, and this is the beautiful thing about our democracy of information is that PubMed.gov offers for free uh, the entire globe access to over 20 million index studies so that's a pretty overwhelming amount of data and what we've done is simply put it on one page and index it so that we get a certain type of argument so if there's 169 studies indicating that turmeric has an antioxidant activity or helps reduce oxidative stress um, that means something and what we're doing is we're calling a cumulative knowledge it's the accumulated knowledge on a certain relationship and we're giving higher points to those studies that are human versus animal versus in vitro and so on and so the idea is that we're gonna communicate evidence quantity here article count and quality in this score called cumulative knowledge and that's what this whole box is here now we're not trying to make the argument that if uh, a certain disease uh, isn't gonna come up high on our list then it shouldn't be pursued as a potential application for turmeric or curcumin we don't want it to be a list that excludes what's not on the list because that's one of the dangers but what we are trying to do is amass the vast um, information in such a way that it's compelling and, and what I mean by that if we go to the National Institutes of Health and the National Library of Medicine's own interpretation of turmeric and again these are the two 
um, organizations that make possible PubMed.gov. So they're the ones who sponsor this and make it available to the public, so we thank you for that. But when it comes down to their interpretation, you know, what is Tumeric effective for? The only thing they say is it could possibly be effective for stomach upset. Okay, and keep in mind this is a thousands upon thousands of year old remedy uh, used for things as varied as boils to stomach upset to inflammation and because we live in a system in a day and age where what science doesn't explicitly validate as being real um, cannot be considered to be real um, we, we, we negate a um, thousand upon thousand year history of um, people using something because it works for them and that, that that's real to me and so here you see a list of insufficient evidence to rate for effectiveness okay and this is skin cancer rheumatoid jaundice hepatitis diarrhea fibromyalgia it kinda of puts people in a void um, because it doesn't really give you much of a sense okay well how much evidence is there and that's really what Green Med Info is about okay here you see several references for their um, above um, statement and you get about 22 okay so 22 references um, what we're doing here is we're giving you 1500 references and like I said it took several months to get to the point where we were able to exhaustively evaluate all of these studies okay and I want to show you one thing that makes um, me really excited is that if you look at cancers drug resistant these these studies are very important because although they are strictly in vitro although I, maybe there is an animal study or, or two there this is never going to become um, compelling or actionable to um, the conventional medical system because if you if you are able to demonstrate something like a spice being therapeutic for a drug resistant or multi drug resistant cancer um, that threatens an establishment that is um, it's beyond criticism I mean as of right now the standard of care set down by the evidence-based model which specifies that a human double-blind clinical placebo-controlled trial is the gold standard for determining the value of something these in vitro animal studies mean nothing so I just filtered those to the top let me show you okay but to me it's very compelling if there's 40 something studies indicating that a natural substance can induce let's say programmed cell death in a hormone refractory prostate cancer cell line or in uh, ret retinoblastoma cells which uh, don't tend to respond very well to chemotherapy or here's one for multi-drug resistant multiple myeloma cells that's hugely promising to me you know if I was in the position of facing conventional treatment which had very poor um, prognosis for actually helping and I knew there was something safe and when I say safe I mean this is something incorporated into diets of over a billion people on this planet and it's being used on a daily basis as a spice well it certainly would make sense at least to use it as a quote adjuvant to use it with conventional medicine and and I can say that because you know there are a number of properties to turmeric that are extraordinarily unique and this is where we get to the pharmacological index so here you go you have a a herb that has been shown to have over 150 different pharmacological actions we already talked about antioxidant properties 230 articles that we've indexed thus far indicate it is an antioxidant here's a very interesting finding 309 studies indicating that it's apoptic uh, which means that it induces programmed cell death in cancer cells or cells like let's say in rheumatoid arthritis which um, are simply you know de devouring healthy tissue and you know, these sort of these activated immune cells that are um, expressing autoimmunity so this property um, is extremely important because um, if you are trying to induce uh, program cell death it is it is reminding the cell that it's time for it to give up its individuality for the whole to naturally safely gently disassemble itself uh, and to uh, make room for new healthy tissue so 309 studies highly compelling to me 
Uh, as you go down the list here, 75 studies on its chemopreventive properties, um, 48 on its chemosensitizing properties, which means if you administer a chemotherapeutic agent, some would call them chemotoxic agents, um, it would help those agents work better at killing the cancer cells. Antiangiogenic for preventing metastasis or invasiveness of the cancers. Radioprotective, so if you're undergoing radiotherapy, um, another euphemism in my understanding, uh, using, you know, obviously um, radioisotopes that are released in nuclear disasters but using them to treat cancers. Well, at least curcumin offers a radioprotective property. You also find 14 studies on radio sensitizing properties. So what we're saying here is it not only protects healthy tissue from the quote therapeutic uh, gamma radiation being applied to a cancer cell for instance but it also sensitizes that cancer cell to the radiation. Um, so you see this diversity of action um, that within the conventional model of sort of monochemical magic bullets um, that are self-same that don't necessarily exhibit, diame exhibit diametrically opposed properties, um, it's fascinating to see an herb express what appear to be opposite um, actions uh, but within the same plant. And you go on and on and on. You know, so this is, this is why we're excited about this page is that we feel by collecting all this data uh, we're providing the world uh, with an extensive um, exhaustive um, evaluation and, and hopefully that will empower people to look back in their cupboards and their refrigerators in their backyards for um, the medicines that have been used since the beginning of time and that have a margin of safety that is orders of magnitude higher than drugs that are being marketed to us as sometimes the only choice and which may literally cost a hundred thousand dollars per treatment um, this to me is unconscionable and makes it all the more important that we get grassroots support for making this information public so thank you so much for tuning in and i look forward to following up with another herb soon